Here we have a Dell Latitude E6430. We're going to open up and explore the insides. Like any laptop, you need to flip to the back and you need to remove the battery. So we're going to remove the DVD drive here. You press the button and the DVD drive comes out. Or you press the button and you pull the tab that comes out to pull out the DVD drive. Next, we're going to remove the back. To remove the back, you have to remove the hard drive slot. So there's three screws for the back, plus the two hard drive slot screws. So when you, you remove these two screws here, just to remove the hard drive slot. For my hard drive slot, I'm not using a normal hard drive. Therefore, when you see me pull out the hard drive slot, nothing comes out. The hard drive slot is actually for a two and a half inch hard drive, but I'm using a adapter. So we need to remove these three screws here to remove the back cover. Removing these three screws reveals everything for you, gives you access to everything just with these three screws. So now that we removed the three screws, just put your fingers into it and lift it up and it comes off pretty easily. Only the top section has, hin um, has hinges, the bottom has tabs. So here you go, this is my hard drive. As you can see, my hard drive is an M.2 hard drive in a starter adapter, which is why when I move my hard drive hard drive cover, it doesn't come out. So here's the RAM, there's two RAM slots. Two RAM slots means there's 16 gigs of RAM possible. Since this uses DDR3, to remove the RAM, you press the two sides out and it pops up and you take it out. Next, we're gonna remove the wireless card. Just to show you, there's actually few, few slots for the wireless card. You're going to have to remove the antennas first. This laptop actually has three slots for wireless cards. The reason why they have three slots is you really only need two. One slot is for your wireless card, the other slot is for your 3G, 4G mobile card. But since 3G, 4G mobile card come in two standards, that's why they gave you two extra slots, one in each standard. So here you remove one screw to remove your wireless card and your wireless card will pop up like your RAM. It will tilt up slightly and you just lift it up. So just to show you here, so the wireless card fits here as well. The wireless card <coughs> also fits here. It's a bit hard for me to put it in as I actually have a cable blocking my way and I can't be bothered removing the cable. So yeah, I'm just going to put my wireless card back as I don't need to remove it. Next, we're going to remove this heatsink, CPU fan. So there's four screws holding the heatsink down. You can remove the screws in any order, but when you screw it back on, you need to screw it back in order. There's a number next to each screw hole on the heatsink. It tells you which order to screw it back in. The idea of these numbers is so that it spreads out the thermal paste evenly. 
So when you remove the heating, you have to you should replace the thermal paste that you that is originally on it. As once you remove it, the thermal paste isn't spread evenly anymore, and there's air bubbles now. Therefore, you need to clean off the old thermal paste and replace it with new thermal paste. Remember to remove your CPU fan. So the fan comes up by tilting So the fan comes up by t lifting one side up first, like that, and then comes back down the other way. So here we go, we're going to have to remove this thermal paste and the old leftover residue one on the CPU. You don't need any special alcohols, liquids or solutions to remove it. As you see here, I just got normal tissue. Just give it a rub, it will come off. Try not to use normal tissue, if you can use a cloth or use hard table wiping tissue as it doesn't break down as this tissue. Since I don't have anything else, I'm just going to use this. So next, we're going to have to wipe off the film and paste off the CPU. My one's quite old, so I'm just going to scrape it off with my nails. So there you go, here we done. So to remove the fan, I'm going to show you. There's two screws here, holding the fan down to the uh, fan down to the heating. We're going to remove that to clean the fan. Also there's this black tape. We're going to remove this black tape as well. This black tape acts like a seal. It saves, um, it blocks air from escaping when the uh, fan blows. This is unnecessary, it's not really important. When you put it down and screw on the case, that blocks the air as well. So we're just going to remove these two screws. So, if you find your laptop overheating or not performing as normal, the reason why is the fan and the heatsink can be clogged up with dust, which you'll see now. As you can see here, my fan has a bunch of dust on it. And my also my heating is covered in dust as well, which I'm going to show you now. So I'm just going to clean this off with tissue. So here it is. I just cleaned up with tissue, just rubbed it left and right a bit, and here it goes. It's a lot cleaner now. So if your fan's dirty, we can <coughs> open up and clean it up too. So there's two screws holding the fan down, and there's actually two clips holding the fan down. Generally, the fan doesn't require cleaning at all, and since the fan doesn't have anywhere that dust can sit or be held, a layer of dust does get created. Here is the clips which I'm showing you. There's also another clip on the other side. So a layer of dust does get formed on the blades and the areas of the fan but this is insignificant. The, the majority of the dust that gets <coughs> held is actually in your heating gaps and that blocks the airflow which makes your laptop overheat. 
that's the most important part. All the rest, even if you do it, doesn't change anything. So I'm just going to screw back the fan. So here's my thermal paste. Since we removed the heating, we have to reapply thermal paste. I just forgot to show you how to remove the CPU, so I'm going to show you how to remove the CPU first before we reapply thermal paste. So there's this screw here, black screw. You need it anti clockwise, half a circle. Then you can lift up your CPU. You can upgrade your CPU if you wish. This is a third gen, third gen CPU, so anything that's third gen CPU for your laptop will fit. Please note I was pointing to there's a triangle on your CPU. There's also a triangle on your motherboard. It tells you which direction the CPU goes in. And you just <clears throat> so here's my thermal place. I'm using Noctor NTH1. You want to use around half a rice grain size of thermal place on the CPU. You want to put it in the center, you don't want to spread it out. You want to put it, <coughs> the heat sink will spread it out. That's the idea of screwing back in the correct order. Remember to plug your fan cable back in. If you don't remember the order, the order is next to the screw holes, there's numbers. So I'm just showing you the numbers. That was one to four. If you don't know what, if you could not see the numbers, if it's in front of you, you can look at it. If you can't see it, just follow me, and you'll be fine. Please note, thermal paste is really important. Don't be cheap on thermal paste. The tube that I show you, the Noctua NTH1, costs basic ten dollars Australian for a tube, and you can use it around fifteen times. So this is basically the end of the disassembly. You can continue watching for the reassembly as some people have complained to me that I'm missing a reassembly video, therefore I have left it there. I have now recorded the reassembly if you need it. And that's it. Have a nice day.